Hi everyone, my name is Brian Whiting. Uh, for our Emerging Topics presentation in IS6570, I'm going to be talking about and doing a demo of how to deploy an enterprise level password manager that you can use in your organization. Um, so to start with, I just wanted to share a couple user stories that might apply to why an organization might be looking into a password manager such as this. Uh, so one is as a developer or sysadmin, I need to be able to securely and efficiently manage a lot of credentials. Um, anyone who's worked in the industry knows that you often have lots of different connection strings, lots of different passwords for different platforms. And so you need a way to be able to organize all those, search through all of them and keep them somewhere secure um, and easily accessible. Uh, next one is as a user of multiple applications that other folks in my organization need access to, I need a way to easily share credentials for certain accounts with my team members. So although shared accounts aren't always ideal, um, oftentimes it is a business necessity that we need to share accounts for certain reasons. Um, and so instead of having you know, an Excel spreadsheet called passwords on a network drive or a, a printout of all your passwords that you share with everyone, um, you want a way that's a little bit easier to share the passwords and a little bit more secure than just an Excel file. Uh, next one is as a stakeholder, I need to ensure that the credentials in the password management system are super secure and won't be subject to unauthorized access. Obviously, a password manager is something that is very important because it has the keys to the kingdom almost. It has all your passwords for all your systems. So you want to make sure that it's a very robust, secure platform um, before putting production passwords in there. Is as a system owner, I need to be able to rotate the passwords that are shared with my team without having to send out an email with a new password or go around and tell everyone the new, the new password. Uh, basically, if one person makes an update to the password, you need everyone to be able to know what that new password is without anyone having to go around and tell everyone one by one. So the solution that I have found, at least in my organization, the one that I really like is an open source platform called Passbolt. Um, Passbolt brand, brands themselves as being an open source password manager for teams, and it's worked really great for my organization so far. So that's what I wanted to share it with you. Um, and I'm going to be doing a brief demo on that. So uh, this is Passbolt's website. So Passbolt.com is how you get there. And they have a couple different options. If you get Passbolt here, you can see that you can use their community edition, which is what I'm going to be demoing. It's free, self-hosted. Um, or you can use the business edition or enterprise edition, which is where um, you know they give you some additional functionality, like being able to authenticate using your Active Directory and have multi-factor authentication, which are awesome capabilities to have. And they also have a cloud platform as well, where they host it and they manage it. Um, but it costs you know nine euros a month um, for the first three users, and then three users per user per month. So you know that cost could potentially add up it's not it's not a huge cost but for a small startup business that might not be a cost that you want to that you want to take on um, and so there's definitely um, a, a use case where you might want to host it internally um, using your own servers or a cloud-based platform um, for this demo i am going to be using a platform um, called i think i think you pronounce it vulture that's how i always pronounce it vulture.com um, they have some some really cheap, awesome uh, cloud computing starting at 250 a month. So, you know, the instance that we're using for this demo is about $10 a month, um, which is really, really low cost. But you could, you know, scale it up to be a lot larger platform or a smaller platform, depending on your needs and how much performance you want to eke out of the system. Um, we're going to be installing it on an Ubuntu Linux 18.04 machine, and it's been fully patched already. Um, we have root access and it's externally accessible. Um, I'm going to be logging in as root um, to do this just for simplicity's sake for this demo. Obviously, in a production environment, you wouldn't want to be using root for doing all your day-to-day -day use. So, um, you know, take that with a grain of salt when you're reviewing my video. Um, and then you're also assuming that you have a fully qualified domain name already configured with your DNS host, and that is to facilitate our SSL cert our SSL certs that we're going to grab via Let's Encrypt for doing HTTPS encryption. Um, and also, you know, having the FQDN makes it a lot easier for your team to access. You don't want to have someone have to type in an IP address to get to your password manager. You want to be able to give them just a domain that they can hit. Um, and then finally, Passbolt uses SMTP um, for doing uh, mail, for sending emails. So um, we're assuming that you have a mail server already set up. I'm not going to go through that. Um, for this demo, I'm actually going to use a service called Mailgun that's really quick and easy, um, and it's really affordable too, so it's a really low-cost SMTP mail server that you can just roll really quick and easy. So without further ado, let's get going. Okay, so here we are. We're logged into this machine as root, um, so that gives us full access to everything, and the first thing we're going to do is we are basically going to just download the installer. So 
uh, the nice people at Passable have recently made an installer for us. Uh, it used to be you had to build it from source, and that took a lot longer and was a lot more convoluted and took a lot more steps. So their installer works great. Um, we're just going to grab it using a command called wget, and that allows us to download it. And by the way, I'll share a link to all these instructions so you can review them if you want, so you don't have to try to copy them you know, from YouTube or anything like that. But basically, we're downloading the installer, and that's been installed now. So if I do ls here, there's the installer that we just downloaded. The next thing we're going to download is a checksum. So Passport provides us with a nice checksum file, and that allows us to review or to double check that the installer that we grabbed is legitimately the installer that Passable published. So we grabbed that checksum file right here. If we can click if we want, there's the checksum that's been generated. So that's our SHA, um, what is it, SHA 512 sum, I think. So it's a hash of the installer, and that allows us to authenticate, not authenticate, it allows us to verify that the installer that we grabbed is what we thought we grabbed. So there's not a man in the middle attack going on. And now we're just going to double check that that installer is verified. So we got an OK right here, so that means we're good to go. Next step is we're going to use the command tar, because um, it's a targiz file. We're going to use tar minus, minus xzf, and we're going to extract that file. So if we look at this, we now have an executable file. There's our permission right there that gives us executable, um, and it is right here. So password ce12 installer.sh. So now the next thing is we're going to fire that guy up, and it's going to walk us through the process. So the first question is if we want to install a local MariaDB. Um, that's a MySQL relative, so we're going to do yes, and that's where we're going to store all of our encrypted password information. Um, now it's prompting us to create a password for the root database user. And I can punch in a password there. And now we're going to create a Passable database username. So this is for the Passable application to use to authenticate with the MySQL database, or the MariaDB, I mean. Um, so we're just going to do PBLT user. And we're going to give it a password. That way, uh, Passable doesn't have to log into the database as root, which is always good. OK, um, now it's asking for a name for the database itself. So we're just going to call this PBLT demo. You can call it you know, whatever you want. OK, so now it's asking if we want to install something called the, um, have GED um, that helps with entropy, helps with randomness on a virtual environment. And we are on a virtual environment, so we're going to hit one there. And then now it's asking for our host name. So I've pre-configured my DNS of one of my domains to point to this. So. So I know that the domain that I'm going to be using is passable.bryy.com. And then I am going to use HTTPS, obviously, to encrypt all of our traffic um, you know, between my server and the end user. So we're going to say two here uh, for automatic. And that is going to get a certificate for us via Let's Encrypt, which is great. Email address there, so Let's Encrypt can send me spam if they need. And then now it is basically running the installer. OK, so here we are. So the installation is complete, and we are ready to finalize the configuration of Passable using their nice little online wizard. So I've gone to passable.bradway.com slash install, which is the URL that we were provided in the installer. And I'm just going to hit start the wizard here. And I'm going to hit start configuration. Right here, it's going to ask us which database we're going to connect to. Um, and we're you know, sticking with the only option, which is the MariaDB or MySQL. We're running that on localhost. And we're going to log in as PBLT user with the password that we set. And there's our database name, and we're going to hit next, and hopefully it'll be able to connect. Great. OK, so this is where we're now going to configure our GPG key for encryption. So this is for you know, the public side of the encryption key. Um, we're going to call this um, Broadway Passport, put my email address in here. And then that's pretty much that. We don't need to change any other settings. OK, so the next step is to configure SMDP. That's the mail protocol that's used to send email from Passport. We're just going to send a sender name as Bryy Passport. 
in our email address, we can do, uh, I'm going to use a uh, passport or a mailgun instance that requires me to use a specific domain. So I'm going to do Broadway passport We're going to connect in this case to mailgun, but you can use whatever mail host you want to use. We're going to use TLS and port 587 to encrypt the traffic. We go. Oh, and we want to send a test email. Sweet, and that worked. So now we're going to hit next. And so now it's just making sure that we uh, know our URL. So we're going to leave it as passable.brightway.com. And the only setting we're going to change here is we're going to switch this force SSL to yes. We do want our users to be using HTTPS always. Um, you know, so that way the traffic between the Passport server and their computer is encrypted. Um, we are going to keep allow public registration set to no because we don't want a million people on the internet using our, our services. So um, if you wanted to be really nice and allow everyone on the internet to um, to register for Passport on your server, which I would not recommend, um, you could switch that to yes. Or if you were behind an environment where, um, you know, it was behind your local network, then you could switch that to yes. And then anyone inside your organization can do that. But those are the settings we're going to change. Um, and now next is we're going to actually create a Passport user for administrative purposes. So this is going to be my username here, I'm the first admin. And so I'm going to call myself Brian Whiting. And your username is your email address. And then now it's pretty much done. So now what we get to do is we get to log into Passport and start getting everything set up. So. Let's start the process here. We're going to hit next. And this is now where it's going to generate a private key. So one thing that I love about Passbolt is it uses a, that public key, private key pair um, to authenticate all the users. So you have a passphrase, um, but then you also have your private key that's required. And that is managed by this little um, browser add-on that you have to install on your browser to be able to use Passbolt. So um, even if someone were to gain access to your password or your passphrase, they would not be able to log into your Passbolt edition, your Passbolt um, instance without your private key. And likewise, even if someone gained full access to your server, if they had root access on your server and got into your uh, MySQL database, they can't decrypt any password without each user's um, private key. And so that's one thing I really like about it is, you know, there's not like just a bunch of passwords stored plain text in the database. It's all encrypted and it's only decryptable using the private key, which is not stored on the server. The private key is stored um, on each user's extension here. So we're going to set up a passphrase though for our, my private key. And I'm going to use a relatively weak, actually a very weak passphrase here just for this demo. Um, just a really simple one that is not a good password, but you know, it grades your password here and it suggests that you use a passphrase that's long and a smart passphrase. Um, but for the sake of this demo, we're just going to use something really basic. And now it's prompting me to make a backup of my um, private key, which again is really important because if you, uh, you know, this private key is not stored on the server anywhere. So if you lose this private key and you want to install Passbolt again on your browser or if you want to install it on another machine, if you don't have this private key, you're basically out of luck. There's no way to recover your data, um, your passwords without this private key. So you have to have this private key stored somewhere. So I'm gonna go ahead and save that. Great. And then now this next portion of the wizard is it asks each user to set up a security token. So basically a color in three letters and it randomly generates one. Um, and that way, you know, when you're logging in that you're actually logging into the website you think you are. So go Utes. Okay, so now we're ready to log into Passbolt. Type in my password there, let it think for a second, and we will be presented with the main screen of Passbolt. Basically, it's, it's relatively simple. You have some buckets over here to organize things. You have a search up here, which works really great. And we're just going to start up by hitting create here. And we're going to give this a name here. And the URA, URI that we're going to put in here, we'll just put, for example. And maybe my username is Brian. And then we're going to use the magic wand 
We're going to give it two goes here, so we're going to generate a nice long garbly gook password that no one could ever remember. And we're just going to hit save. And so that password has been encrypted, and the only way to decrypt it is by having both my private key, um, which is stored in the Passbolt extension there, as well as the password that I used to log in. Basically a really simple system that works great for sharing your passwords. And it's super secure. Again, I love that the passwords are not encryptable or decryptable just with a password. You have to have that private key that only the users have on their browsers. So that private key, again, it's not on the server. Um, so you're not able to decrypt it even if you gain full access to the database, which is something I love and makes me feel like it's a lot more secure of a platform. Anyways, that's about it. I hope you've enjoyed the demo. Um, give me a call or shoot me an email if you have any questions. I'm happy to help. Um, love to talk to you more about it if you have any questions. But other than that, that's, that's my demo for the day. So thank you very much. Bye-bye.